Good morning guys. Today I want to talk about why we think Katahdin sheep are a great fit for our operation. So check out the hat guys. I finally got a cool hat to wear that's going to offer me some sun protection. What do you guys think? Cool right? And it's green. Grass fed. Green. Get it? Good morning fellas. How's it going in there? Enjoying the shade? Let's go check out their paddock and check on how much forage they've consumed. You know, I don't hear the fence making its distinct clicking noise that it's supposed to make when it's on. The green light is flashing, so it's not a battery failure. But something isn't right. And they knocked over their feeding trough again. Um, I thought that may have been the issue. They may have been grounding out on that right there. But it doesn't look like any of the cable is touching the trough. It looks like it's just the gate handle. Well, I just walked the perimeter of the fence and I'm not seeing anything out of the ordinary. I'm not sure what could be causing this. I'm going to try detaching and then reattaching the battery and if that doesn't make any difference, I'm just going to start charging the battery because that's the only other thing I can think of. Green light, but still no noise. There's nothing showing up on that little volt tester there either. Which makes me wonder if it is the battery. So when I charged it up all the way, when I when I left it on for several hours, the needle was down here. Now it's up here. I'm not sure. I'm probably just not reading this meter right. What I'll do is I'll leave the battery on the charger for a little while. We'll come back and check it and see if that needle's moved at all. Oh, they hear that bucket. They hear that bucket. Hello, gentlemen. Here they come. Some for you. Hey, watch out. So while they're chowing down I'm in the corral, I'm going to close this gate off here so that they're not out in the paddock with the unelectrified fence. So looking in their paddock, they're definitely uh, leaving the knapweed. You see those stems there, uh, over there. They're leaving the knapweed, which is good. And this is where a lot of those hawkweed leaves were. They have definitely been eating the hawkweed leaves. So I was doing some additional reading on hawkweed last night, and I found uh, some examples of ranchers that were actually encouraging their cattle and or sheep to eat the hawkweed. Um, I saw one person write that their sheep love hawkweed and eat the flowers from it readily. So it may not be as big of an issue as I thought. I read some information that in addition to being aliopathic, that it was also toxic to livestock. And of course now I've read some anecdotal information about it being fine for livestock. So again, if you have any experience with livestock eating hawkweed, uh, let me know in the comments section. I'd like to hear from you. With all that out of the way now, let's talk about why we wanted Katahdin's for our homestead. After a lot of consideration and really locking in on the idea of adding sheep to our homestead, I started looking at what breed might be right for us. And right off the bat, I knew I did not want to mess with shearing. One, you have to schedule a person to come out and shear. That particular trade is a dying one. They're harder to find these days. And also, you have to pay for the person to come and shear the sheep. Shearing wool was just not something I was interested in messing with, so we found hair sheep. Hair sheep is just like it sounds. It's a sheep that has hair instead of wool. Now, they grow wool during the winter to keep warm still, but they shed their wool in the spring and just have a fine hair coat, kind of like a dog. 
So that's what really drew me into the Katahdins, it was a hair sheep. But in addition to that, it was, it's also a hardy species, very adaptable to either warm or cool climates, and very resistant to parasites. Sheep and goats are pretty susceptible to internal parasites. The Katahdins, however, are naturally resistant to the parasites. As long as, as, long as you are maintaining a healthy environment for them, the Katahdins are also docile in nature compared to some other breeds, so that makes them easier to handle and a real benefit to the beginning homesteader. One of the most stressful times of year for the shepherd is during lambing season. There are a lot of shepherds that have to be super hands-on with their ewes and helping them lamb, and that wasn't really something appealing to me. I'm looking for low maintenance, low input, and the Katahdins really check off that box as well. The Katahdins are excellent mothers. They have excellent mothering instincts. They tend not to reject their lambs. They produce great milk for their lambs. Their mothering instincts are so good that they're actually very suitable to just having them lamb out on pasture as nature intended, not having to bring them in the barn and putting them in the lambing jugs, monitor them constantly. Ewes are pretty self-sufficient in the mothering process. So wool sheep produce an oil internally called lanolin that they excrete out into their wool which gives the wool all of its beneficial properties. Since the Katahdins are a hair sheep and not a wool sheep, they don't produce lanolin like the other sheep. Lanolin is reported to be what gives lamb that distinct, stronger flavor than beef. So supposedly Katahdins are much milder meat because they don't have the lanolin in them. Now that isn't necessarily a benefit to me. I really love the flavor of lamb. I like that extra flavor we get. But when marketing a meat, it's really important to know what your market likes. Most Americans don't eat lamb because they don't like that extra flavor. So a Katahdin might be a great way to introduce others to lamb meat and develop more of a market. So just to recap, the overall theme of why we wanted to go with Katahdins is that they're low maintenance. No wool to shear, parasite resistance, so less medical intervention, docile, so easier to handle, safer around children, and they're excellent at mothering, so when it's time for us to get breeding stock and actually go through a lambing season, it's not going to be crazy insane like a lot of other shepherds have to go through. This is our spinach we harvested yesterday. I'm just sautéing it in the skillet with some olive oil and garlic. And now I'm going to add a little bit of salt and some crushed red pepper. Um, you want to try your spinach, buddy? Yes. The spinach we picked yesterday? Yes. Yeah, it still tastes good. 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 You like it? It's what does it taste like? Spinach bowl. Bit of food produced on the homestead. Right, buddy? Yes. And those eggs are from Pops? Oh, yes. This is from his chickens. It's been about eight hours, and the needle has moved some. It's definitely taken some charge. Looks like it still has a ways to go, but I am going to have to get that battery hooked up before nightfall. Well, the light's blinking again. It's on, but it's not making the click let me know that it's actually energizing the fence. How's that coming along, buddy? Pretty good. Yeah? yeah. With the green light blinking on there, it's usually an indication that the battery's working. If it were flashing red, that would mean it was low. So the battery's working. I unhooked everything and then hooked everything back up again. I um, did everything I could think of to go through the troubleshooting process of getting this thing to work and it's just not. I let these guys go out on paddock for a little bit but I just lured them back in to the corral here to keep them safe because well that, that fence is just not energized. It's not going to do anything to keep them in or anyone else out. Try to get this fixed tomorrow and get you back out on pasture. Good night.